Hello everybody and welcome back to Chief Air's Off Grid Ways, a homestead in the desert. Yeah, it looks like they're getting a little bit of rain over that way. There is a, a forecast for um, scattered thunder showers um, now through the weekend. And uh, I'm hoping that we see some. I could use it. My plants could use it. Everybody can use it. All right, so let's get to today's topic. Today's topic is going to be, um, I was asked, uh, what is a shunt for and do I really need one? Okay. Well, what a shunt is for is to give you more accurate readings of your actual state of charge of your batteries. And that's because the state of charge for LiPo 4 is different than the state of charge for lead acid. And uh, where lead acid, you could just go over to it with a uh, multimeter or a set on volts and take a reading across the poles and it'll tell you how many volts you got in your battery. And then you would figure, well, since uh, 10, 10 and a half volts is uh, the, the kill point of a lead acid battery, I don't want to go that low. So if you're at 11 or somewhere around there, you say to yourself, well, it looks like i got to shut some things off to keep from killing my batteries or get, get a charge to them. So um, you want to keep track of that on lithium batteries because your um, state of discharge, the if you put it on a, a graph, it would show the difference. And I'm going to show you that here in a minute. Let me see where I can set this. I have a book in my hand here. And let's see. Well, let me step inside here because there is a slight breeze and I don't want my book to blow away. All right, so I'll just set that right there. All right, so here's the state of charge graph for LiPo 4. All right, now, this is your state of charge here, 0% to 100%. Okay, and these are the volts that you would have on your, um, your in your battery. Okay, and this tells you um, what the different voltages would mean for percentages of state of charge. Okay, now this is not accurate. This is only guesstimating. But, the point of me showing you this graph is because look at the way the bar goes here. Or the line. It's a line graph. Okay. So, when you're at a 100% state of charge, you're over here. And from 100 down to 70, you stay pretty much level. Then it drops a little bit at 60. And then it stays pretty level all the way over to 20. Then it drops a little more substantially there down to about 15. And then it goes over to 10%, which is the lowest you want to set your um, your batteries for you don't want to go below 10 percent uh, if you don't have to because uh, everything below that is just a waste okay so you see it you're dropping from 13 volts down to 10 volts in that last 10 percent of state of charge and i gotta get my spray here because i got me a well, let's fly It keeps landing on the same spot on my leg and driving me up a wall. I hate when they do that. They know when your hands are busy and they find a place behind you to keep landing. All right. So, for lead acid, your 100% state of charge would be up here somewhere in the same vicinity as this line. But its drop-off goes like this. Okay, it comes down almost on a 
perfect 45 degree angle. All right, so you're going to go from your 13 plus volt for 13, uh, well, they say 13 4 um, is usually good to. I was at 13.35, so 13.4 is good to figure on a 100% state of charge. But that's with voltages, that's only a guesstimate. Because look, you can be at 100%, you can be at 90%, you can be at 80%, you can be at 70% state of charge at that 13.3. Okay, the 75% is at 13.3. So you drop the 13.2, you're still at 50%, but you just dropped 25% in that little time. Okay, so you want to be able to get an accurate reading um, of that. So that's why you would put a shunt in. The shunt gives you a more accurate reading than a voltmeter would, and it'll give it'll. It has built into this little unit right here is a little mini computer. And the blue light flashing means that my Bluetooth is working. But uh, that little mini computer reads the resistance going through these resistors here in the middle from this leg to this leg, which is the same negative pole of the battery that goes over here to my load. Okay, so it's reading a resistance in here then the computer computes that by the information that you put into your settings on the shunt when you tell it what your um, full state of charge is it considers that when you tell it what your um, maximum discharge is at say a 10 percent that's what it, it considers that and then it calculates the current going across those resistors right there and computes it all and does the numbers for you. So all you have to do is look at your um, readout. And mine is on the phone, so I can't show you what the readout is. But I checked it just before I came out, and I was at like 98%. So I'm good. I'm good going into the night at 98%. Now last night, I ran the fan all night long. Um, the ceiling fan above me because the winds were blowing, but it was still intermittent winds and it was hot. So I put the ceiling fan on to, to break that intermittent so the wind didn't stop, make me hot, and then start again and cool me off. So the fan uh, filled in the gap. And I got up this morning to 75% of my battery charge still there. So that wasn't bad for the night. I went to bed at uh, 90% and got up at 75 percent so i didn't use very much electricity all night long or i did use a lot of electricity but i didn't hurt my batteries much with that ceiling fan running and the refrigerator on and remember on hot days like this and hot nights like this the ambient temperature makes your refrigerator run more often even if you don't open the doors when you heat up the outside of the refrigerator, get the outside of the refrigerator gets hot. It's uh, just like opening the door. The uh, sensors in the refrigerator sense that things are getting hot, and they turn on the compressor, and that's when you start using electricity. All right, so that's the explanation of why you need a shunt if you're going with life Pro 4 batteries. Now remember. I've got like umpteen amp hours. Uh, yeah, I got 920 amp hours in this 12 volt battery system with only four batteries. And if you multiply 12 times um, 920 amp hours, that'll tell you what my watt hours are. So I'm like well, well over a thousand something amp hours. I had it written down. But I didn't bring that out with me. But uh, you can do the math. And that means that I can run that many watts for one hour. Well, if you break that down overnight, figure that by 10, 
um, 10 hours overnight and you divide 10 into the 1400 and something uh, watt hours I have um, that means that I could go what uh, 140 hours hey I'll take it anyway that's all I really have for today uh, hunker down day I'm hoping the rains get here I could really use some and if they come I'm coming outside to sit in the rain and I'll uh, record that because I'll be dancing in the rain all right everybody thanks for joining me this is G Bear signing off